20s, who had mm -hmm. a schlocky store in Rockefeller Center. Mm -hmm. And um, he didn't really carry bras, but we were in the neighborhood where the theaters were and the uh, costume people and wardrobe people would come in, and I started to buy things that they asked for. Mm -hmm. And when I found a bra that fit me that didn't look like my grandma's contraption, I was so happy. Mm -hmm. And um, I f other young women said, well, what do you do? You know, what are you wearing? You have big, big boobs, and I do too, and I'm only 20 years old. And, and how I do we make this right? I right. mean, feel good. And I have a boyfriend, and I want to look sexy. Mm -hmm. Not all the time. And I just started scoping out uh, what the options were. Mm -hmm. And I found a lot of the British brands mm -hmm. that were just brand new coming into this country had bras that were proportioned very different than the American sizes. Mm -hmm. So the sides of the bra were smaller and the straps were thinner and mm -hmm. you could get two hooks instead of four hooks or five hooks. And they were lacy and they were colorful and they were cute. And women just started coming to me. Mm -hmm. And because we were also close to Saks Fifth Avenue, they started sending their brides to us mm -hmm. for specialty undergarments. And I, I don't know how I could just look at a woman and say, oh, no, you're not a 34B, you're a 32D or a 32 double D, and usually be right about mm -hmm. it. And it just became a word of mouth thing where everybody's, mm -hmm. if you've got big a big bust and you need bras, go see Lori at SNS, she can help you and she understands, you know, she's she's there with us going through the same thing. Right, it's so amazing. But then, um, you know, you're working at SNS and, you know, you were there like 20, 22 years and there was some, you know, obviously you were bringing in a certain clientele mm -hmm. and developing the business mm -hmm. and um, I, I know at some point there was promises or talk of it and it didn't happen. So um, you just decided to take the high road for your own life mm -hmm. and mind and mental whatever and you had to leave it um, behind. So what was that like for you? And then I know quite quickly people just started to, they knew you were the goods there mm -hmm. and they started to come to you. But what was it like to take, you know, to stand up for yourself and then not know what would happen and then the big emergence. It was terrifying mm -hmm. because I was with him for over 20 years mm -hmm. and I kept hoping that, you know, he's going to make good on the promises and we were very close. He was kind of like a father figure mm -hmm. to me. I learned a lot about hosiery because that's what his family business mm -hmm. was. Um, and it was traumatic, you know. I was mm -hmm. sitting there one day, and a, he d hadn't paid a bill, and a vendor was there taking back pantyhose, shoving them into a duffel bag, and there was a big box of uh, men's T-shirts and underwear that we were shipping out to Miss Saigon or something, and the box was huge and heavy, and I had asked him to move it a few times, and people kept bumping into him, uh, into the box, and he wouldn't move it, and I went to move it, and something popped in my knee. <gasps> and that, combined with the vendor there taking back the goods, I said, I've got to be crazy to keep you got on a message. doing this, <laughs> you know? <laughs> it's just, it's not working. And I stormed out in a huff, mm -hmm. and I went home and I cried for two weeks. I had, uh, I was newly married, and my uh, husband and I were thinking about doing something together. Mm -hmm. We weren't sure what. He had a nutrition background. Mm -hmm. And I have a master's degree in organizational behavior, but I knew I never wanted to work in the corporate world. Mm -hmm. So well, I, I guess you saw a lot of organizational behavior at that job <laughs> with your <laughs> old boss. So well, we were located in the same building as the American Management Association. Right. So all these women that were going for trainings would stop in because the store was right at the entrance of the office mm -hmm. building that that uh, the uh, management company was in. And I would help them all, you know, and watching women climbing the career ladder and being promoted and I, I said this is not going to work for me to be in a crappy retail job for the rest of my right. life. I want more and I want to do more with my life. And uh, about week two, when I was sitting you home started getting and licking phone my calls. wounds, <laughs> a guy called me that I hadn't seen in a while, and he said, I was just at SNS, and you weren't there, and some girl who works there told me you were doing your own thing, and she gave me your phone number. I'm working on a movie, and I need some garter belts, and I need some bullet bras, and bobby socks, and white cotton panties, and uh, can you help? And I said, absolutely. And uh, we met, and he told me what he needed, and I said, what's the name of your film? You know, it's just a small movie with Russell Crowe called A Beautiful Mind, and that and was my first movie. What and a great one <laughs> to start out with, right? Yeah. 
Yeah, but I had all the contacts. And you did 42nd years, Street and things like 42nd that. 42nd Street and Thoroughly Modern Millie and the producers There's, was coming to yeah. Broadway. So they all came right away. Boom, boom, boom. One what? after the other in a very, with like in two weeks after I got the call from the movie, mm -hmm. all these uh, people that couldn't get what they wanted at SNS anymore were looking for options. Right, and you're truly that thing when one door closes, another one, yours open like really wide. How did you do the business out of the apartment at first? I guess that's how it had to happen for a little bit, and I now you're in a film center. Yeah, ships with my vendors, mm -hmm. and I called them and told them what was up, and I uh, had credit cards. Mm -hmm. So somebody from SNS had been waiting for an order for a very long time, six weeks. She needed some mm -hmm. pantyhose that was very unusual. And I called up Alan on the phone from the shop, and I said, call this number and ask for this person and tell her we need Givenchy style 555 and color cream and size E. We need six dozen. We need to have them overnighted to our home address for delivery tomorrow. Give her the credit card number um, and let's make it happen. And the goods came the next day and we delivered it. It was for a Matthew Barty uh, exhibit or installation that they were doing mm -hmm. and we saved the day. And I really like that feeling of being and a that's hero. And <laughs> that's one thing you do over and over again. Yeah. I think